welcome back, back everybody, everybody to, to our culmination, culmination of, of all our 10 seasons of... smallville we have reviewed the first nine this is going to be a review of the 10th and final season of the show we've been reviewing them all throughout this year to celebrate the show's 20th anniversary uh it's been a long long journey we've talked 200 no we haven't even talked 200 episodes yet because this because there's 218 episodes so we talked about like 190 episodes um little more um episode by episode season by season it's been a long satisfying slightly bumpy but uh <laughs> satisfying ride to get here and we have finally reached our review for the final season of smallville i am once again joined by my cousin pack guy how are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic. I'm really excited to talk about the ending of this show. This is going to be sad talking about it because because we're gonna I mean we're gonna do the retrospective after like after after this too like we still have to film that but like after that it's like talking about Smallville for the whole year is done. Yeah, which is going we're to we're never allowed to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> never hold on to Smallville. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, what are your overall thoughts on season 10? Is this one of the better seasons, strong, one of the stronger seasons, one of the weaker seasons, kind of mid, cause I've seen people say it's kind of mid, but, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I really like 10. I was very satisfied with it as an ending. I think it has problems. I think there are some things I would have done differently. Yeah. Um, but overall there's a lot to love in season 10. Yeah. Um, a lot of very, very like strong endings for different storylines and characters and th this season um like a lot of final seasons do took a lot of time to kind of kind of show what has come before and pay tribute to like there's a lot of returning things and like nods to previous things and mm -hmm. like i thought that was a good job um there are some things that could have brought back like bizarro um <laughs> yeah well you got clark luther clark luther's great but i would have loved bizarro to come back yeah. I feel, um, I feel like that's a good trade-off, though. Yeah, it could have brought back Mixel Plick. Uh, there's a couple <laughs> few end, a few different characters it could have wrapped could up. Could have like brought Helen, back football coach from Hothead. Uh, yeah, the Hothead guy. Whatever happened to Helen Bryce after she jumped off that plane? They mention her. Yeah, okay. Well, like, what happened to her? Uh, <laughs> Lucas Luther. Where is Lucas Luther? <laughs> but Shelby the dog is sometimes there, but... <laughs> Sometimes not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a really strong ending though. It could have brought uh, Ian Randall. The thing, uh, which way? Who was Ian Randall? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, that's right. Okay, <laughs> I thought at first it was Bug Boy, and I was like, Alex, they did bring back. Yeah, Bug no, Boy. they brought Bug Boy back. <laughs> um, yeah, they brought back characters. I think like Bug Boy, like Lex Luthor. It's weird to say that back to back. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was I, this, I mean, the, the first ever like real memorable meteor freak and like Superman's arch enemy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they brought back, like, Lionel Luther, like, John Schneider. And all cool of his ways. glory, man. Yeah, Jonathan Kent was back sometimes. Like, it was Ed cool. O'Toole came back as Martha. Yeah, man. But luckily, they kind of left the Red Queen stuff in season yeah, nine. Thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun. Like, season 10 was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I, I think it's just, I, I look at it kind of, like, the same way as you. Like, it's got some problems, but for the most part, like, all I can ask for for a final season is to be satisfactory, and that's what 10 was, honestly. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. One sec. <laughs> Damn it, I was going to play the Jeopardy theme. What's up? I was going to play the Jeopardy theme. I couldn't get it up in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, I like. I think with any final final season for a show the thing i look at is like as long as it's satisfactory i think i'll be i think i'll be happy with how it ends yeah like, i have get, to wrap up everything but i i get like i get that there's some detractors out there who like are really like mad that like oh they didn't show tom welling in the suit and all that i understand that because obviously I, I everybody understand. wanted to see that yeah um like i would have loved to see even if it was just a shot yeah. like or just like just a moment of actually seeing him in the suit like i like the direction they took yeah and i get it like the show's about clark yeah. like they kind of make superman seem still even in those moments like some mythical idea yeah. you know um but i like what we got um i like those moments a lot even though he's not technically like in the suit yeah but uh, yeah. yeah yeah i mean for me 10 um 
I mean, there's some, there's a couple episodes here and there where I'm just like, could have done away with that. Like you probably could have used your time more wisely. Uh, yeah. You, you didn't need to go off to like an Amish settlement where people are crazy <laughs> and there's like blue kryptonite fire. It's a cult. <laughs> like, I was like, what is happening? I know. Uh, I do. Okay. I'll say this. I really like where Lois ends up in this season because she finds out about Clark and then she also becomes a member of the justice league slash watchtower. Yeah. Which I, they, which I think is a, which I thought was like very smart. Yeah, I thought they incorporated Lois well. They didn't fall for the trap that happens sometimes when you have, like, a big relationship where, like, the secret identity is a big factor. Yeah. It didn't have, like, Mary Jane in Spider-Man 3 where she finds out about Peter and she's just kind of bitchy about it. <laughs> like, she's like, oh, I hate that you're getting more attention than me in my Broadway show. And then... <laughs> like, he's freaking Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Of course he's getting more attention. <laughs> Are you saving lives, MJ? No, you're up there singing really poorly. And getting poor reviews. Um, I'm through it, love. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The other other aspect of Lois that I really love, too, is that, like, they kind of, like, I feel like they took, like, that advice that, like, Jonathan Kent used to give Clark and, like, kind of, like, moved it to, like, onto Lois, which I thought was a really, like... When he should let people die in a bus, Alex. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> protect your secret Clark. Yeah. <laughs> and, and fuck the Luthers. <laughs> fuck the Luthers, man. That's yeah, Jonathan but, Kent's gee, I like I I because I rewatched a couple episodes these past couple days, two of ten, and I noticed that a lot with Lois. Like Clark Clark is also like very instant, not about like his and Lois's relationship, but like about like the choices he's trying to make this season. Yeah. He's he's insecure, but she's always she's like Jonathan Kent in many ways. Like she's really like giving him the advice to like no you got to step into the light or hey you need a new disguise because people are going to put two and two together eventually like she's always there to be like a guiding force for him which i love that about her in this season for sure and i mean i know a lot of people have complaints about how they handled dark side in season 10 and again i can understand like what you wanted but the cw in Didn't 20, have the money. In 2010 is not going to give you a Zack Snyder Justice League look in Dark Side, exactly. like a full blown physical form. I like the direction they took. I it. love the idea that he could possess people, and yeah, then like, the, and then there was like, like a, a darkness that like yeah, affects like, people and preys yeah. on their like insecurity. But like and then like and then like people don't even know it. Like Oliver gets possessed and he doesn't even know it. Yeah, like I thought that was really cool, and I liked that that was the direction they took. I think you could have had a better final confrontation with him. Um, but I like the overall direction they took. Dude, the best part, though, when he possesses Lionel Luther. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just Lionel Luther and all his evil glory in this season. I just loved, you know, uh, the way they also handled Darkseid, where it was like, they they brought in, like, Darkseid in the comics is, he's surrounded by a whole cast of interesting characters. Right. right. And they brought in people like Granny Goodness and Desai. Deadshot and godfrey and like yeah. all these characters and i thought that overall i liked the idea that they were like creepy cultists who were like trying to like <laughs> yeah, bring doesn't godfrey them. own like a like bdsm club or yeah. something well yeah he owns like a radio show and well he has a radio show and then desaad owns a, like a club yeah and then uh granny goodness runs like an orphanage and that wraps into testa storyline and like which they was do a good obvious job. from the beginning yeah but it was but. but i thought they handled the dark side stuff well like it's just the only problem is because of the way they handled it where he's more of a force of nature than like you don't really get to like see him talk much and that type of stuff yeah um he doesn't really have the same like presence as say like a davis or lex or zod yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah. But I thought overall it was a cool idea. I, I wasn't huge midway through the season, though, where it kind of became, like, the VRA stuff with, like, the fascists. Yeah. <laughs> There's, like, Gestapo the disco in, like, in. A, the Daily Planet. <laughs> it's, like, like, Nazis are like, what is happening? <laughs> the VRA thing kind of was just, I, I was, like, watching some episodes. I'm like, this whole VRA thing is kind of, like, out of nowhere. I like the idea, but like, but they went so far with it where like Slade Wilson looked like John McCain, and he yeah, just just like, John McCain. Yeah, and he like was walking around with like, "Oh, gonna try and strike me in the eye." 
<laughs> I'm like, especially when like a year later they gave us Manu Bennett Slade. I know, right? I'm like, yeah, that's more like you. Like, what is this guy? <laughs> um, yeah, it was an interesting direction. But the have... VRA stuff, I just it wasn't a favorite thing. Dude, where they where they take Tess this season though, like they yeah. they literally give her like a redemption. Yeah, oh yeah, I thought Tess really came into her own. I love everything they do with the Luthers in this season. I thought it was very Except, except for one aspect, right? What's that? Erasing Lex's memory. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> that's stupid. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, but overall, like, I thought it was important to bring the Luthers back in such a big dude, way. Like, dude, you, like, it's the final season. Like, yeah. you had to. Like, yeah. they were hinting at this whole, like, Lex clone thing for the whole season. I was like, Rosenbaum has to come back. He almost didn't. He almost I, didn't. I was, I was like, they, like, I feel like they were so confident he was going to. I feel like that's why they did it. Yeah, but I remember, like, around the time of, like, halfway through the season, Michael Rosenbaum was like, I'm not coming back, guys. Like, sorry. And then the internet flipped out at him it was like what the hell's wrong with you and then he's like a, like that same day or like a day later there was another article where it's like michael rosenbaum changed his like, mind I feel, like he was a I feel like he was joking i don't think so i think he was like because uh, that was i think why they had to kind of rush him into the finale like yeah. he was only on set for like a day or so like yeah because they were like we're writing the finale they even said like we have a version of this finale that has lex and a version that doesn't because we don't know if we can get Rosenbaum. Yeah. Like, when he decided to come back, the only thing he could fit in his schedule was like a day or so of filming. So that's why he's only in a couple scenes. Yeah. But it was better than nothing. It was so important for him to come back. I know. I think he. But, I think he ended up realizing that. Yeah, and I like the way they handled the build up to it. Even like I liked that we saw the Alexander, the clone of Lex, yeah. and that he was played by actors who used to, who played Lex in flashbacks. Yeah. Like I thought that was cool that they got to reprise. Lucas their- Rubio. Yeah, like in that kid who played Alexander back in like season seven. Yeah, um, yeah, it was cool. I really liked everything with the Luthers. The way they brought back Lionel, we'll get to it. But like that <laughs> I, was. I've never seen you before. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm just here for the. I'm just here for the. Uh, what does he say? Like I'm just here for. Want to see how it all turns out. Yeah. He like looks at the camera. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> and then he's just sitting there like I'm like, holy shit, Lionel Luthers back. Don't I know you from somewhere? I don't think so. From out of town. Unexpected visit. But I guess I'm back in the nick of time. Wouldn't want to miss how it all turns out. The, the scariest version of Lionel. The long-haired, yeah. mean, evil Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Oh, so great. Yeah. Lionel Luther, man. All right, episode by episode. Let's do this. Um, so the premiere was called Lazarus. Yep. Yeah, which I love I love the callback to uh, the pilot with uh, Lo- Lois tied to the, uh, the cross in the cornfield. I like Clark, that. Had to save, Clark had a saver from Discount Voldemort. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really liked how this episode starts where Clark is like kind of dead. And, yeah. like, and then he's Lois in like the cornfield and like the afterlife. Yeah. And they said and originally he, if they had the budget, you know how he sees like Lex in the cornfield? Yeah. It was yeah. going to be Lex, Brainiac, Bizarro, and Zod. Holy and, shit. And, and Davis. We're Holy all gonna shit. Be, like like all, the, all, the, all the villains. All the biggest villains. I'm like, what? They didn't have the money, probably, or like the schedules didn't work out. But I'm like, that would have been so cool. I know, like, right? God oh. damn it! Um, yeah. Like that's a really cool. I like that whole sequence. I love him catching the Daily Planet globe in the premiere.
yeah, he's man. like getting close to flying. Like you can tell he's. I know. Like, like I remember, anytime he did a super jump, my mom was like, oh, "He flew! He flew!" I'm like, "Mom, he didn't fly." <laughs> You'll Not know yet. <laughs> You'll know when he flies. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the premiere was really good. I thought that actor um who played old Lex clone. Uh, oh, he was good. He was good. There's even like one line that always creeps me out because it sounds like Rosenbaum, where he's like, "By the time you drag me to shore," like when he says <laughs> that, I'm like, "You sounded like Michael Rosenbaum." <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really cool. And I remember thinking, like, "Oh my god!" Like they're bringing Lex back, sort of, and like they're setting up this little kid Alexander as like the last clone. What if by the end of the season he's Michael Rosenbaum? I but know. That's not even what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Episode two is Shield, which I think yeah. is a pretty cool one. That's the one with Deadshot, right? Yeah, Deadshot trying to kill um Deadshot who looks like Taylor Kitsch. What was her name? Cat. Um Cat Grant. Cat Grant. I almost said Cat Graham, but I'm like, that is Bonnie from Vampire Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, Cat Grant, who I I wasn't huge on her. She was okay. Oh. So um, I'm I'm not huge on the whole Lois and Africa looking for like ISIS yeah. tune thing. I was like, I yeah. was like I'm pretty sure, like, if if you're going to Africa for, like, Perry White to, like, because he gave you an assignment, like, you're not going to go looking for the Tomb of Isis here. I like, Hawkman's there, and, like, I like him and all, I, but... I, like, I, like, I didn't mind Hawkman being there. I just have never been huge, and it's not the show's fault, but Hawkman has such a ridiculously convoluted backstory about, like, <laughs> previous lives and, like, like reincarnation. A hundred times. Yeah, like, whatever. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it is okay. It's an okay episode. You, yeah, they introduced the. Um, you have that awesome shot at the end, though. What was the shot at the end? Clark, Clark oh. out in his new suit, and then like he's standing on the rooftop, and then like the American flags in back of him, and it looks <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, and he's got the yeah the uh, leather jacket with the yeah. red, which was cool that he finally was getting back to red and blue. And you could tell, too, that it was like Oliver's like, I'll hook you up. Here's some leather. <laughs> I put all our guys in leather. Um, but, like, uh, this introduced the Suicide Squad. Um, yeah. But it ended up being kind of a waste because they really don't really play that big of a role in the season. No. Uh, which is a shame because I liked Rick Flag in the show. Deadshot was okay. They brought back Plastique for the end of this episode, and then she never comes back. <laughs> like, okay. Um that's the yeah. chick from uh, Black Sails, right? Yeah, who was in season eight. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then yeah, it's it's a pretty good episode. I just wish the Suicide Squad like went somewhere. Yeah. Uh, episode three is Supergirl. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I just remember <laughs> that shot of like the billboard falling, and then Supergirl coming in to save it. I was like, what that's, was that's, like that's, even for a TV show? It was horrible. That's one of the most. That's one of the worst effects the show has probably ever done. Like, yeah. it's not a good scene. Yeah. Like, it looks really, really rough. I do, I, do like Clark, I do like Clark's first attempt to fly. I was yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, because I, like I, was, I was like, oh, they're, like, calling back to season seven when he was calling this stupid. Yeah. But, they did like, what they should have done, like, three seasons ago, where yeah. Clark actually tries and then falls. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. I like that. But Supergirl, I mean, we've talked about Kara at length in season seven, but even here, it just feels like she's kind of out of place. Like she shows up and it's like, oh, Jarrell told me I need to hunt down this new darkness. I'm yeah. like, and then, like, I get that, like, Lois knows at this point that, like, who Clark is, but, like, I feel like, wouldn't anybody else, like, be like, don't you think that person's, like, related to the blur? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And she's, like, being a celebrity about it, too. Like, I remember she's, like, doing a photo shoot. Yeah. And, like, well, it's it's weird. Yeah, and then you have, um, 
Is that where Godfrey's like given like the press conference at the beginning? Yeah, because this episode introduces like more of Darkseid. Because you see a glimpse of Darkseid at the end of the premiere. Yeah. Which funny fact at the end of the premiere he has blue eyes, but after yeah. that, every it's time red. they show him, it's red, including flashbacks of that scene they changed his eyes to red <laughs> and i'm like thank you because yeah he does have red eyes in the comics yeah. um but uh yeah they introduced uh, godfrey and he's like possessed by dark side and you get like a lot of that stuff um i like the idea that they they explain that dark side came out of the terror in the space that clark made to send the gandorians away yeah like that That's portal like led uh, let dark side in yeah um i thought that was really cool um, but Godfrey's, he's whatever. He's my least favorite of the three. Yeah. Uh, the unholy trinity or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good episode, though. I mean, doesn't this one end with Oliver revealing his identity, I think? Yeah. Yeah, because cause this, I, I think this is, like, at a point in time when Lois is, like, starting to, like, think about, like, telling Clark, like, you should step into the light. Yeah, and Oliver's like, I'll take the first step. He, even, though Clark, Iron Man even, though, even though Clark hasn't told her a damn thing about him yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, f- episode four is amazing. That's the two hundredth episode. Two hundredth yeah. episode, homecoming. That's that's a real good one. I love that um, episode. It's just such like it's like a <laughs> one of those classic like how to get so tight and nerdy. <laughs> yeah, it's just something that's like showing the different though going to the past, the present, and the future, and the fact that Brainiac is like his guide is so good, yeah. and like it's Brainiac Five, which is a comic thing where like one of the Legion members is like Brainiac Five, right. and it actually made sense with the way the show did it because if you look back at like the amount of times Brainiac has been like defeated, it was four, <laughs> <laughs> and like even like at the end of Legion when they got Brainiac and they put him in like the orb of like black goo, mm-hmm. they're like, oh yeah, maybe Brainiac Five will be nicer, and I was like, oh, that's a nice nod to the comics, and then they actually brought brainiac five into the show yeah so i i love i love too when like he just goes into the future to the daily planet like it's like i can't be in two places at once like i love how he sees like a like what he's going to look like in in the future like how to get so uptight and nerdy or he walks <laughs> by a newspaper article holy shit you have that did that come with the uh complete series hell yeah it did nice <laughs> along with all sorts of articles Newspaper articles. I'm dead. I'm by, r- reported by Lois Lane. Reported by Cat Grant. <laughs> I'm jealous. Dude, I love this thing. Um. Oh. oh <laughs> Kara. <God. laughs> but yeah, this was really cool. And I'm like, yeah. this is the article that Clark walks by. In, yeah. Uh, in that episode. Yep, it is. I think, they, I think they also show it in that bullshit Crisis of Infinite Earths scene. I think they do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we said homecoming. I also, I liked, I mean, I love that. I like Clark seeing like being in the elevator with like old, older Clark yeah. it's like, with a reporter, yeah. mild mannered reporter. Because if you didn't go through this, you wouldn't, you wouldn't become me. She's a handful, isn't she? right on time you know i'd be here time travel think it through because you were me when you went through this and i'm well done my man how did i become so uptight and nerdy there's no time to chat about how where and why we've been through weirder things i need you on the roof but when did i start taking orders there's a nuclear reactor about to blow in an abandoned plant on the outside of town now, i can't be two places at once but if you knew it was going to happen then why didn't you stop it never would have experienced all this and you never would have become me that's too bad roof now that's what i become Yeah. Um, 
I also really like just the fact that Brainiac is the one doing it because he's the, his whole message is like, you have to get away from your darkness and then you can become better. Like, and that's kind of what he is now. Yeah. Um, and like, you see, like, I always liked when he took Oliver or he took Clark to Oliver's apartment in the present mm-hmm. and Oliver's like just revealed himself to the world. And like everyone's all these reporters were all hounding him and he just keeps waiting for Clark to call. Mm-hmm. And he's like, see, like your friend needs you and like, you're ignoring him. And like, and I loved bringing Bug Boy back. Oh, it's like, so good. Just going back to Smallville High was like so cool, and you like go into like the. Well, yeah. too, and then you and then like uh, he he bumps into like the teacher, and she drops stuff, and then like he bends down, and then you have that like flashback to like one of the first scenes of the pilot where it's like, "What are you, man or Superman?" Yeah. And then uh, just seeing so... the wall of weird where it used to be. Yeah. Oh. Like, that that was so good. Like I got chills, and then even the music they play at the dance part is the same song from the premiere. Yeah. Like the series premiere, and I'm like, oh my god. And then Bug Boy comes back, and I'm expecting, like, oh, Bug Boy, he's gonna, Clark's gonna whoop his ass. And then Bug Boy's like, oh, I just want you to tell Clark, thank you. He, like, reformed me. And I'm like, you, like, wrapped up your mom with webs from your <laughs> mouth, and you molted in the shower. Like, ugh. I know. <laughs> like, I'm good for you, man, but I'm still grossed out by you. <laughs> I also, yeah, that's a great one. The ending, too. How did Lois not know that they were floating? Or how did Clark not even know that he was floating? I forgot about that ending. I love that ending. They're dancing, and it's just sweet, and they're quiet, and then they're just floating, and I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) So good. So good. Everything falls Everything changes Nothing has changed The hundredth and two hundredth episode. I love how it's like it's such a, like a stark contrast too between the hundredth and two hundredth. Yep. Yeah. Episode five is ISIS. Don't care. The only the only <laughs> the only the only scene you need to watch is the end scene. That's it. What's, what's the end scene again? Where Clark finally tells Lois. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the only significant thing that happens. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, every time the show is like, oh, witches are possess her, or <laughs> ancient Egyptian goddesses possess her, I'm like, can we stop? <laughs> like, stop doing that. Yeah. Six is Harvest. Yeah, not a fan. I do like the beginning when they're driving and Clark's like telling her literally about the whole show. She's like, wait, so that weird thing that attacked Jimmy and Chloe's wedding was like Davis? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our Twilight Zone acid trip to the uh, Phantom Prison, that place was... Kryptonian. And that horny toad-looking thing that crashed Chloe and Jimmy's wedding? Kryptonian. And the spaceship that I found in the woods near the dam. Also Kryptonian, that wasn't mine, it was my cousin's. Sorry about the third degree, Clark. It's just not every week that a girl learns her boyfriend to... Alien? And you're still okay with that? Are you kidding me? It's like dating a god or Bono. Our, our uh, acid trip to the Phantom Prison? Yeah, that was Kryptonian. Yeah, that was real, yeah. That time, yeah, that was real. Like, I liked all that. But then their car breaks down, and... They run they, into a cult. <laughs> they end up in, like, a weird, creepy, like, middle-nowhere backwater town, and it's, like, a weird, creepy cult. It's basically cult. the KKK. <laughs> the only really good thing about Harvest is the, the B-plot with Tess and Alexander. Yeah. Where she's taking Alexander in, and then he's, like, aging fast. Yeah. Like, in, like... And that kid is like you're starting to get Lex's memories, and he's like, "He hated you." My name shaved. is Alexander. My name's not Alexander. My name is Lex. Yeah. And then like he like shaves his head at the end, and I'm like, oh, "Lex is coming back!" <laughs> <laughs> I remember being so excited. I'm like, just so like by the end of the season, he's gonna be Michael Rosenbaum. Are you, okay, so before we go any further, actually, are you kind of surprised they didn't bring Lana back or no? Mm. like thinking about it now because yeah, I, mean, I, like, I get like she's like infected with kryptonite and she can't get near clark yeah but, it, it is strange that we didn't see her in the final season yeah well like i get i get it because they gave her such a the necessarily big send-off 
<laughs> where she like took up a whole like chunk of that season. <laughs> yeah. And I think that final scene that they gave her was enough anyway. Yeah, that was fine. Like I don't, I didn't feel the need for her to come back. Yeah. I just thought I just thought it was kind of strange, but they needed to bring Pete back in a better way <laughs> and give him a better resolution Dude, than strike up. <laughs> what if he showed up at the high school reunion in like a kryptonite NAS car? <laughs> that would have been amazing. Like Pete bring him back. <laughs> Uh, seven was ambush. Uh, that's a yeah, that had uh, a decent one. Yeah, General Lane and Lucy Lane come back, and you know what's a missed opportunity though, Alex? What? Uh, Michael Ironside, who played General Lane, mm-hmm. great actor, great character actor, always plays the same type of guy, very authoritative type guy. Yeah. Um, in the '90s cartoon of Superman, he voiced Darkseid. Um, oh, and so he, do you think he should have voiced Darkseid? He did an amazing job in that. Well, and, like, it? he's like, if you will not be my knight, kal you will be my pawn. And, like, he was so creepy and, like, and intense. And I'm like... He's a really, were... like, I, he's a really good voice actor anyway. Because, like, he, even though I don't know, like, that series, like, he was the voice actor, I think, of uh, Sam Fisher in Splinter Cell. Oh, yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I already, so possessed. I know him a little bit. If they should have had General Lane get possessed by Darkseid and become, like, his vessel... And then you could have had Michael Ironside be Darkseid. That would have been amazing. That would have been. I'm like, I'm like, why would you bring back him and not do that? That would have been, like, that Dude, would have I, been amazing. <laughs> I, I hated the fact, too, though. Like, I kind of hate, like, the B-plot in that episode, though, where it's just like, oh, like, Lucy Lane's, like, purposely, like, planting, like, these compromising pictures of Clark or something. I'm like, yeah, oh, didn't she, like, try to kiss him or something? She uh, does. Yeah. yeah. I didn't like Lucy ever. I thought she added nothing to the show. But I did like the like parent, uh, the meet the parents type vibe where like General Lane is like interrogating Clark <laughs> in like, like a barn or like a spotlight. Like, he's like, he's like, here's a list of chores. It's like, what are, he's like, what are you going to make me do? Like scrub the bathroom tile with a toothbrush? He's like, number 18 on the list. <laughs> yeah. Then this episode too has um, Rick Flag. Well, before we even get into that, an iconic Smallville icon gets blown up. The talent. Yeah. The, the thing that hasn't been relevant in like five years. <laughs> <laughs> like it literally just became like Lois Chloe's apartment, apartment and then Lois's apartment and that was it. You like never <laughs> saw the coffee shop part of it anymore. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so when it blew up, I'm like, oh, about time. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny story actually regarding the talent. I remember like I think it was like probably like season four came out when my brother was first watching it. And I, and like he showed us like the first like episodes. And I was like, oh cool, I like the show. It's like young Superman. I want to like write like a little like fan fiction. Here I am, like 10 years old, right? Man. I was like, OJ, what's the name of the coffee? Sh- uh, what's the name of the high school newspaper? He's like, the talent. And so like one of my episodes was like Lana's like crying because she's like the Talon got blown up and like <laughs> Chloe's like crying with her I'm like like the school's on fire the Talon got blown up <laughs> you're like they just got the name completely wrong yeah I was like, I, and, then, and then I watched the next episode I was like oh wait I mixed I mixed this up <laughs> yeah the torch <laughs> uh, you know what we never mentioned just justice for Principal Quan. I know we're like eight seasons oh, too I, late. I forgot to mention Justice him in season Justice for Principal Quad. Yeah. I love that guy. He got killed in a brutal fashion. I know. I, <laughs> I loved him too. Season one, man. Oh. He got crushed by a car. <laughs> we, we never, we never, we also never ever brought up that other uh, principal who like, uh, who was always like yelling at Clark for being like late. Oh, yeah. He was no Principal Quad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Principal Quad just too. The legend. He's too iconic. Legend. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, going back to this episode though, you have um, yeah, the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I mean, you had Rick Flag and that random. Well, oh, I, I love the idea that they like staged like that whole missile like blowing up the talent to like try and like kill General Lane. You could have just walked up to him and shot him, but a missile's oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, eight is abandoned. Here's my question, though. What? So the Suicide Squad captured Oliver in the beginning. Well, at the end of nine to the beginning of ten, yeah. and like he's he's Chloe, get help or whatever, going through the vents, and something is chasing after him outside, hitting through like the the vents, like punching really hard. Was that Rick Flag like running on top of the vents, like punching shit, or like what was happening? I don't know. <laughs> I just it think, like I was like an army of people after Oliver. But yeah. I'm like, was it General? Was it uh, Rick Flag and a couple of his buddies? Just like, <laughs> <laughs> plastic is just. <laughs> um, eight is abandoned, which I think is a pretty good episode. Yeah, that introduces Granny Goodness. Yeah, uh, that, Tess that's is find out that Tess is a Luther. Yeah, which you know, not shocking, but I liked it. I like that yeah. it really made it feel like, well, you know, you were like, okay, yeah, Lex and Lionel left after season seven, but the Luthers were still a presence through Tess. Yeah, and then through this season, she becomes wrapped up in the Luther plot line. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I really liked that episode, and I liked uh, Granny Goodness. I mean, I just love that character in anything. Yeah. I think she's such a weird villain. <laughs> And dude, in the in that same show where Dark Side was voiced by Michael Ironside, Granny Goodness was voiced by Ed Asner. <laughs> the dude that a, played Carl and Up. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool seeing Granny Goodness. Well, I like I like I like how like Tessa's name is like short for like Lutessa, so it's like it's like <laughs> you're keeping all the L's like in the Luther. Lutessa Lena Luther. Yeah. Um Dude, you also have Terry Hatcher in this episode. Yes, Lois's mom. I really liked that. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Hope I'm doing this right. <sighs> Lois. My little girl. I've asked that you girls not be brought to visit me at the hospital. I know you don't like being told what to do. And I want you to have happy memories of me. Oh. The colonel is convinced I'll pull through. He packed a bag with my favorite nightgown and sweater. <laughs> I didn't know your father noticed those things. He even managed to slip in blue. Your father got this for me the day we found out I was pregnant with you. We were stationed in Russia, and there this is considered a symbol of hope. He's going to do a wonderful job raising you. But sometimes, girls need their mother. So as hard as these tapes are to make, they're for the days that I want to be there. And won't be. Play the tapes. Think of me. Because losing a parent, it can create a hole in a person's heart. Someday, you're going to meet someone special. Knowing you, I'm guessing tall, dark, and handsome. I also like the idea of like Lois going to the fortress by herself. Yep, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this is it's just an all around good like episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Nine Patriot, directed by Tom Welling. It's pretty good until I hate the ending. Yeah. Like, I, I like Aquaman coming back with Mira. I think that's cool. Um, Way better Mira than Amber Heard. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like that he was like being kind of like a terrorist, <laughs> like an eco terrorist. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Like, he's blowing up like plants and stuff. Oil rigs. Yeah, and he's like hanging out like a like a Miami like like uh, 
uh, what's aquarium. the word? Aquarium. Aquarium. I don't know why I wanted to say ambulance. Like that is not the right word. <laughs> uh, yeah, an aquarium. And he's like hanging out with dolphins and shit. I'm like, yeah. hell yeah. And then, like, this is when he like seemed less like the like, whoa, ready, wet and ready, bro. And he was more like, no, Clark, I'm a terrorist. <laughs> Like, I'm the king of the deep. I've learned my origin. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. And then, like, him and Mira are kind of, like, a cool power couple. Um, like, I like that. He also has that random-ass stealth suit for one scene <laughs> at the beginning, where it's, like, all black, but, like, orange stripes. And then he never wears it again. He also he also has our, that classic line, that's our Boy Scout. Our Boy Scout, um... Also, I always laugh because there's a the scene of this where he's like trying to talk to Lois Clark about like his relationship with Lois, and he's like has all these random ass baseball analogies. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Clark, you can't be the, the the star of the game if you don't get on the field. <laughs> Whatever, you don't get off the bench. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, well here's where the episode falls flat for me. Okay. So they introduce John McCain. Uh, Slade Wilson, um, uh, <laughs> is like not Deathstroke at all. Um, yeah. and he's like, Oh, yeah, the VRA, and like Aquaman is against the VRA, so like, cool. Um, so there's this whole sequence where like they kidnap Aquaman and they kidnap uh Oliver, and like they have them chained up in like this place, and Mira comes with Clark and busts them out, and like, Oh, this is cool, but then the whole thing is just is so anticlimactic because Slade is shooting at Clark. And like, there's a bomb about to go off. Is it, wait, is this the is this the one where like, uh, there's like the kryptonite, um, like, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Um, uh, it's slipping my mind. What is it? Um, the things like, that come down. Yeah, you know, like kryptonite, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't like get to Slade because of the thing. But it's weird because because there's kryptonite there, but then Clark can still use his powers. Maybe. Well, yeah, he was like, oh yeah, like, but like. I am man and steel or whatever. And like the whole place blows up and he's fine. Yeah. And that's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, but I do like the ending though, where Clark actually like does bring Lois to Watchtower for the first time. And also there's always one little moment that's a nitpick that bugged me in this episode. And I'm like, well, you're the director. You can't let this happen. What happened? Like, like obviously they don't have the budget to do a lot of like, underwater sequences you know yeah. um so when they show the scene of uh aquaman swimming through the water it's literally just a cropped out scene from aqua where he was underwater because <laughs> you can literally see his hair is longer and he's wearing just an orange tank top and oh, shorts God. like aqua and i'm like <laughs> you just Come on, like stock can, footage, yeah. Like, like, don't do that. At least, like, you don't even have to show them underwater. Like, show like a CGI like blur going through the water. Like, yeah, I don't know. That uh, it's always stuck out to me. I'm like, well, ain't come on. I know. I never noticed that actually. Yeah, it's next time I watch it, I'll have to be on the lookout. Yeah. Uh, episode ten is Luther. Great, Great fucking episode. episode. This is a. This might be my favorite yeah. episode of the season. It's yeah. so good, dude. Welling, Welling is Clark Luther unhinged again. Get up, Tess. Get up. Get up, Tess. Get up! <laughs> so good. And he's like, you know, it feels weird not having blood on my hands before lunch. <laughs> I'm like, what the shit? Like, this guy's yeah, a psycho. Like, yeah, and then like, uh, dude, like the scenes in like the all in the um in the mirror uh, universe where yeah. it's like in, in the fortress and you see body. like you see, you see Lionel Luther like has like all these experiments set up in the fortress. Yeah, like I love that Clark, whole world. Clark Luthor. That was like, such an interesting. Dude, world. they brought the sword fights back with the Luthers. <laughs> Think. What it took to build this empire. Hard work, dedication to family. And more than a little spilt blood. It's, just, it's one of my trials. No, no, it's practice. You just need a little practice. You know what they say, burning the candle at both ends, trite but true. <laughs> 
I don't want to watch you making stupid mistakes, Clark. I know what you're capable of. You can make a father proud. I'm not your son. Watch out for those emotional reactions. The heart. It'll blind you, son. You want to be your own man. That's natural. But remember, Clark, I am your father, and I alone raised you in my own image to become the man that you are today. I must have lost perspective. <laughs> but that's why I'm here. To set you back on the right path. You could conquer the universe. The man of tomorrow, Clark Luther. Yeah, like it was cool. Like the whole world was kind of gray. Ultraman. And, and like, yeah, they made Clark Luther was this show's version of Ultraman. Um, I like that date that like Luther Corp owned like everything. Like the Daily Planet was called like Luther Corp Media. Yeah. Um, and like I just like the whole world. I like that I like the relationships they set up where like this is a world where Lionel like never like he found Clark. Right. Instead of the Kents. And like right. raised Clark. And Clark then never was the good guy who made Lionel a better person. Right. Like he just Lionel just like raised him to be a psychopath and, <laughs> and like him and like he he clark luther killed lex well dude not only that but this episode goes to like dark places with clark luther where it's like implied or he very heavily implied actually that there's like an incestuous relationship with him and tess oh yeah for sure 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah it was pretty disturbing um <laughs> and i like clark i was I, remember, I, I was like i was watching it the other day i was like I was like, thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute. This is like incestuous. I was like, they could get away with this on cable TV back in the day. Uh, yeah, it was. But yeah, it was it was a really good episode. I Like I said, I love that they brought back Lionel this way. Yeah. Because that was the Lionel we all loved the most. Redeemed right. Lionel was cool and all. But evil Lionel listening to opera, being like <laughs> conniving and like torturing and tormenting his son was like. A lot, like the magnificent bastard, as he used to be called. Yeah. Lionel Luther, he'd just come into a room and just completely own everyone. Like, Dude. that was the best. Dude, like, John John Glover just kills it. Yeah. In this too. Like, as he always does. So good. And, like, when he, like, just starts beating Clark with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, like, he gets accidentally brought to the real world, like we said, with that great last scene. Well, like, well, I love it, too, because it's like Clark gets the mirror box and then you just see Lionel in the background. The background like, no! <laughs> yeah, that's a great episode. And like, yeah, Lois was married to Oliver. Yeah. And then like they both hated Clark. Yeah. Like it was a good one. man. Dude, You know what like... I also loved in this episode? Uh, Lois could tell it was Clark immediately. Yeah. Unlike Lana. <laughs> Clark doesn't dress that good. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven is Icarus. Eh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's 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 one of those where Hawkman like, dies. The VRA stuff is meh, and then like like the Gestapo are interrogating everyone at the Daily Planet, <laughs> uh, and then like, um, yeah, Hawkman dies. He gets killed by John McCain. <laughs> well, I, was, I remember that was the mid-season finale, and I was like, the first half of the episode I was like. This is going way too smooth. Anytime something goes way too smoothly, you know something's up. I still am not a big fan. I get why they had to do it for like, it must have cost too much to get all those actors back. But when they have the funeral for Hawkman yeah. and you have like Aquaman and Cyborg and then Bart Allen, all their hoods <laughs> up and you say you can't see them. I'm like, okay. okay. Yeah. But then it ends on a cliffhanger too. Yeah. They all just suddenly get ambushed and knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. Which leads into the uh, the mid season premiere episode twelve collateral. It's all right. I like it less than Icarus. Yeah, but it's very Matrixy. Yeah, I, I like, like Clark flying. Explain. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, 
Even if it wasn't cyberspace? Yeah, but like Chloe in like the white suit with the yeah. dual tag. I'm like, what do we do? Yeah, that, I did not like that at all. Yeah, and then the then the Suicide Squad shows up and is immediately neutralized as a threat by Chloe. And then they just never come back. <laughs> like, what a waste. Okay. <laughs> uh, 13, Beacon. That is also one of the best episodes of the season. Yeah. Vote down the VRA! <laughs> oh, yeah. There's that little crowd. You can tell there's like 10 people. <laughs> like, what is happening? Yeah. Uh, uh, were you... Okay, were you one of those people? Because I remember when, before this, when they announced this episode, like, weeks before it aired, they asked, like, fans to submit, like, testimonials of, like, what the blur meant to them. I were you one that. of those people? Did I submit one? I don't... I feel like I did. I, I think I was going to, but I didn't know like how to like edit like video footage and all that back I feel then. Like I must have, because I would make YouTube videos back then. Yeah. I feel like I must have. Like I yeah. feel like I do. Do you remember that though? Like yeah, I remember that would have been amazing. Because yeah, they showed clips at the end. Dude, of the you would have had your 15 minutes of fame. Oh, I'm, maybe I can't remember if I did or not. I hope I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blur. It's Brian. I like to consider myself a longtime supporter of these vigilantes, as they like to call it now. All of my hopes were confirmed when I saw that mysterious letter S showing up everywhere. I knew it was you guys. And so what it's worth, Blur, thank you. You've already changed my life. Keep fighting, no matter what. I remember what it was like here in Metropolis before we came. We couldn't even walk the streets. But since the Blur came, we have hope. So I just want to let the Blur know that there are still people support him, not Being a hero isn't about being able to save every person from a mugging or, or pull someone from a burning building, but to give people hope for a brighter tomorrow. The Blur is a symbol for integrity and morality and selflessness. If you're listening to this Blur, thank you for everything. I want to be a hero to my kids. I want to be a hero that helps give them faith in themselves that they can accomplish greatness. Thank you for helping me believe that heroes can and do exist. Blur, I want to thank you. As long as you're doing what you're doing to keep the people of our hometown safe, us boys and girls here can keep on doing our jobs. I look at the Blur and his powers that he has. And they're amazing to be sure of, but that's not what inspires me about him. It's his character. When I see the Blur and others like them turn their differences into strengths, it gives me hope that one day I can do the same. He's always there for us, standing up for us, and doing what's right. That's who a hero is, somebody who stands up for others. And everybody has a favorite hero. Well, my favorite hero is the Blur. Thanks for being somebody that I can count on to do what's right. We love you, Blair. We're always here for you. I can't believe they'd risk coming out to defend me. You have no idea how much you mean to people, Clark Kent. I don't think a couple hundred testimonials will be enough to change the vote. Try a couple hundred thousand. All of them willing to step forward for you. They just needed a place to be heard. You're an American hero, Clark. But yeah, that's it's a great episode. Mostly the thing I love about it is the um you find out well you see Lionel come back for real, for yeah. real. And like Lois walks or I forget who finds him first. I think Lois or maybe Tess. I forget. Someone finds him in the Daily Planet and he just turns around and he's like <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Hell yeah. And then like <laughs> he finds Alexander, who's now a Lucas Grabeel age. Yeah, and he's crazy pants. Like, Luke, like <laughs> Alexander's like trying to assassinate Martha with like kryptonite bullets. And yes. Like, like, and Lionel's like, um, like I love when they first meet, and Alexander's like, he has Lex's memories now. So he's like, I watched you fall forty stories. That was the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> I'm like, that's such a thing Lex would have said yeah. back in the day. Oh, yeah. But just like Lionel owns this episode, man. Dude, I remember anytime Lionel's there, he just owns it. Oliver Queen comes into the room 
And, and Lionel goes, oh, forgot to change the locks. Cause he's just... <laughs> well, dude, okay, speaking of, like, people going in and out of places, dude, does, has it always bothered you in the show that everybody just leaves their apartment doors and house doors, like, unlocked? I like, people just even... randomly, like, walk into the Kent, like, the Kent house and they're like, hey, how are you? I'm like, I can't that door be locked? That. I can forgive that because in places like that, a lot of times they don't lock the doors and like out, out there where you're kind of far away from neighbors. Um, I can't forgive the Luther mansion having zero security ever. <laughs> <laughs> like it's always easy to walk in. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Lionel just completely owns this whole episode. I love him and Alexander together. I love when, uh, is it wait? Is this the one at the end where uh, Tessa like tries to like stab the needle into Alexander? Is that this one? Yes. Yeah. So Lionel, well, Alexander burns down the Luther Mansion. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and Clark saves Lionel. From Dude, him. all these iconic Smallville locations just getting blown up or burned. <laughs> like, how dare you? Um. Not to yeah. mention we move out of the Kent farm soon. Yeah, that was. It's a great episode. Like I said, everything with Lionel is just a plus. Yeah, of course it is. It's Lionel, like evil Lionel, the yeah. Lionel we love, you know. Um, Fourteen is Masquerade. Yeah, this one had Clark uh, eventually. Well, this is when he came up with the glasses. Yeah. Um, even though Supergirl already did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I love that scene when he like first does it. He bumps into someone and like, hey, watch it, man. And uh, he's like, oh, sorry, like, you know, I love. <laughs> Try to be more careful. Now. Well, I love where he's just like. He's like, I'll, I'll be here, hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, that's like a perfect line. Well, I like how it starts where they're trying to give the blur disguise at first. Yeah. Where they're like, put on like a hood and sunglasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lois, Lois puts a hood on his like jacket. Yeah. He, she's like, what do you think? He's like, I can't believe you did this to my jacket. It's like, they, like it won't stay up during super speed. <laughs> then they realize that Clark Kent should be the disguise. So I like that. Yeah. I like the sod. Being the main bad guy, it just feels like it's been too long since, like, the other Dark Side episodes. Yeah. Because, like, the VRA was, like, sort Dark of... Side's, like, scattered way throughout, like, because yeah. he's not in the season that much. Like, the VRA is supposed to kind of be because of Dark Side. Like, that's why they're all so crazy. But, yeah. like, I, I just feel like there wasn't a big enough focus. And then all of a sudden, Saad shows up, and he's like, oh, yeah, Dark Side. And he, like, name drops him. And it's like... Oh, yeah, that Granny Goodness. Yeah, yeah, I remember her, yeah. But, like, it's like, yeah, it felt like a big jump between. Yeah. Uh, 15 is probably the worst episode of the season, Fortune. The Hangover episode? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to say about it. It's fun to, like, watch them goof I, I, like, I Here's the way I look at that episode. It's, like, their last, like, hurrah and, like, fun episode before the shit goes down. For sure. For sure. That's kind of how I look at that episode. Because it's not a good episode. But, yeah. like, I, I feel like it's, like, the last time that they were able to, like, have, like, an actual, like, fun filler episode. For sure. Yeah. And, all like, it's kind of funny, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, I love when, like, Oliver and, like, Lois are, like, tied to the chair. And he's, he's, he gets out and he's like, yeah, I mean, dude, we'll get your ring back. And he cuts her, he cuts her loose and he's like, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 16. I never know how to say this word. Is it Scion or Scion? Sky. Yeah. yeah um that's a great episode too yeah like i like um well Al connor Al kent red k <laughs> yeah connor kent in the comics is superboy um is half his dna is made up of half of superman and half of lex yeah so i thought the way they incorporated that into introducing him sort of into smallville was cool um where alexander becomes like clark yeah like, that was cool. I like that a lot. And then, the, of course, Lionel, once again, he, he <laughs> starts because he got kicked out of Luther Corp at the end of. Uh, oh, no, it was in this episode. I think he gets kicked out. Um, or maybe it was the one before. At some point, Tess kicks him out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He, star he starts to like right. he starts getting very like brutal and like messy. <laughs> <laughs> and like he looks more disheveled and then i love that at the end of this episode they connect the dark side and the luther plots which have been the two big like antagonistic plots by yeah. having him be at lex's grave and then dark side shows up yeah it's awesome. i loved that i was Perfect. like hell yeah <laughs> Together, 
We could have ruled this world. I would give anything, my son, just to have you by my side. Perfect ending. Yeah, and I like that, you know, Con uh, well, I keep calling him Connor, but really it's Alexander. Like on Red K, it was cool too. Yeah. It was and like Clark had the line of like, you're coming home with me. Like, yeah. The the kids. Was, I yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I love too, like um, Clark, like having to shield, like, because uh, I think he's like, um, how am I trying to word this? I can never word anything. Um, he notices that like uh, Connor's like, starting to develop heat vision so he has to turn him like yeah Yeah. it's a fun episode very fun episode 17 is a great one too kent yeah it's like the sequel to luther yeah uh, where clark luther comes back uh he gets to spend more time in the real world yeah uh clark gets to the uh, the lionel world again uh but this time he bumps into that world's jonathan kent who's just a drunk lonely man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who hates everything. Yeah. Um, and he lost Martha like years ago. Um, it's a really good one. I it was, love it was Clark a, it was interacting really, with him. It was really interesting to see them bring John Schneider back that way. Oh, he did come back in the premiere, though. We forgot to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that ghost scene. That was good, too. Yeah. Well, do what you do best, Clark. Prove him wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this one's really good. I love Clark Luther. I like the idea that, like, the way they beat him is that Clark brings him to the fortress in that world and has activates Jarrell. Yeah. And Jarrell's going to kind of like reteach Clark Luther how to be like a good person. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Though, I mean, I think Luther and Kent are like by far like the top notch episodes. The one thing I wish was that Kent had Lionel in it. Yeah. Because of how much of it is focused on that. Like Clark Luther's looking for Lionel. Yeah. Like it's like a whole thing. And I'm like, I would have loved to see the two of them have a scene together. I also would have loved, which originally was supposed to happen, I forgot to mention, in Luther, in the original script for that episode, Clark Luther was going to find Alexander. Ooh. And they were going to have a scene. And Alexander was... That would have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Yeah. But still, I mean, Luther and Kent, I like... I just love how it's like... They're basically sequels. Like, they mirror right. each other. Top-notch episodes, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, 18, Booster. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's definitely the weakest of Jeff Johns' is like comic yeah. book episodes. Yeah, not a huge um, fan of it. Like I like Blue Beetle in the comics a lot, but the way they did him in the show, he just they look like a Power Rangers guy or like a Beetleborg. Yep. He did. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> it just wasn't like I liked Booster. I thought the actor who played him did a really good job. Yeah. Because that's the type of character he is. He's just you know self. Yeah. Thing, like, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an okay episode. It just it felt like they should have done it way earlier. Well, that that's what I'm actually gonna say about another episode coming up too. Mm-hmm. And I think you know which episode I'm gonna be talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next episode, 19, is Dominion. Is that the episode you were talking about? No. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, Dominion. I really like. I like. Going back to the Phantom Zone. I Zod like, with a beard. Zod with a beard. And, like, you find out that, like, the Phantom Zone Zod from Season 6 and Major Zod from Season 9 combined. Yeah. And I'm like, hell yeah. So now there's just the one Zod who's both. And, like, he has the beard now, so he looks even more like Terrence Stamp. <laughs> Dude, like, that has one of the best fights in the show, too, I think. Between Clark and Oliver? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Dude, and Zod's throne is amazing. Yeah, and he's just sitting there with, like, a snake. <laughs> um, I also love the very end of the episode where uh, Zod gets trapped in the Phantom Zone again. And yeah. he, he's, like, there's the, like, Superman 2 shot where he's, like, pounding on the glass. And there's the two people beside him who look like Nan and Ursa. Like, I love <laughs> that. I'm like, yeah, nice. That I was love, a perfect way to send Zod out. I, lo- I love how they did, like, all the, like, little, like, subtle nods to the old movies and all that. And I like that Dark Side had been to the Phantom Zone. Yeah. Or like he like Zod knew him. Like yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was a it was a nice little uh, interesting connection. Uh episode 20 is prophecy. This is the one where I was saying I think I fucking hate this episode. 
<laughs> this is I the, hate it. Yeah, this is the one that I think should it like minus the final scene. This this should have taken place earlier in the season. Should never have existed. I hate everything about this episode. <laughs> I hate it so much. I remember watching this episode and I got scared for the finale because that was like the following week. Yeah. Like, it, oh God, is this finale gonna suck? Like, oh, like cause that was really bad. <laughs> Like, do you want to you want to explain to the people what this episode's about? Okay, where do I start? Okay, so like <laughs> Lois gets Clark's powers. Yeah, from Jarrell. Supergirl is is off on like an Indiana Jones mission with <laughs> Oliver, and Granny Goodness is there. There's some bullshit about the bow of Orion, and like I'm like what? And then while that's happening, there's these like mind control things controlling star girl and like toy man is like there and then the legion of doom shows up <laughs> and metallo's there and he's evil again and black mantis <laughs> I'm like what is happening this episode was solomon awful. grundy solomon grundy yeah i'm like why is he in this show all of a sudden it was bad man it just felt so hokey and shitty and everything every storyline sucked and i'm like this is bad. I'm like, this finale might be bad. That's why that's why I think it should have taken like they either shouldn't have done it or they should have it should have happened earlier in the season. Or like split up those plot lines a bit or make them better or something. Like it wasn't good. And then Supergirl's like, oh, I'm just gonna go to the future. I'm like, good. Bye. <laughs> Miss Clark's bye. wedding. Thank God. Yeah, bye. Okay. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> uh, 21 and 22 is a double episode because the finale was... It should have been called Destiny. We I all know. know. That was going to be we my all next... know it. I'm so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. a great episode. Yeah. It's a great ending. A the first people... half is slow. Yeah, a lot of people give the first half a lot of flack because they're like, "Where is, is this even going anywhere? It's pretty slow. I remember watching it on that premiere night and I'm like, okay, like, okay, enough of the like, I was Clark fine with that as long oh, as coming, coming up with our vows. <laughs> I was fine with that as long as the payoff was good. Yeah, which it was. Which it yeah. Was. Um, but yeah first... I, I, dude, I still have that one nitpick where Clark, like, or now he's Superman. Where he flies into Metropolis with that stupid blue like flying streak behind him. Yeah, why? <laughs> I hated why? I hated that effect. But like I this is my one little nitpick. I like I'm fine with like uh actually, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself, I think. No. So like he he ta- he flies into Metropolis and he grabs an entire planet, which I'm fine with. But then like Oliver's there and he just looks up and he's like, Come on, Clark. You can do this. I'm like, how the hell do you know that's him? Who else would it be? <laughs> he knows it's him. <laughs> Is it Kara? <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I love the episode. I love the way they wrapped up a lot of the stuff. I, not a huge on the fight between him and Darkseid, but I like that it's when he first flies. Like that yeah. makes up for it. Well, dude, the thing the thing that I love too is like he gets knocked backward, I think. Does he get he gets knocked backward, right? Yeah, like through like some like, like rafters, yeah. Yeah, in the barn. In the loft, so, yeah. Yeah, and so then and so then you just hear Jonathan Ken's voice be like, You're gonna have to let Jarrell guide you from here. And I love that where he has like the vision of him in the fortress and he's like looking around like the fortress and you see like all of his like These diff- are your trials, Kelly. Yeah, like you see like all his different like heroic like, oh, acts, like I got chills right now just <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> my trials your final trial is upon you my son 
you are ready. Great, like a greatest hits compilation. Uh, yeah, and then it cuts to him just like in the air, and all the pe- debris goes flying past him because he yeah. stopped. Oh, yeah. dude, and it's like, da, da, da. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> he's then, actually flying. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes back to the fortress, and then it's like, and then the the Superman suit rises, and then. And then Jarrell like creates like a ghost like Jonathan Kent and he just holds out the suit and he subtly breaks the fourth wall. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that, mm-hmm. but he like he's literally like subtly like looking at the camera, just holding out the Superman suit. And like, always hold on to Smallville. I ask you to remember. One thing, your abilities may be of my blood, but it is your time in Smallville with Jonathan and Martha Kent and all the people there that made you a hero, Colin. Always hold on to Smallville. I know. I mean, a, a smaller moment that always gets me in this episode, man, is at the wedding mm-hmm. when Lois stand, like gets there and Clark isn't there. Like, oh, yeah, she's all. like looking around. Yeah, she's like, where the hell is he? And all of a sudden, he grabs her hand and he walks her down the aisle. Like, <laughs> and then it gets <laughs> even worse, man, because he's looking and he's like, he's like sees Martha, and then it like passes by a guy, and then you see Jonathan standing next to Martha, and he smiles, and I'm like. <laughs> I remember when I was watching it, I'm going to cry. Like, I'm like, that's yeah. so good. That's I know. So good. They did it so good. That church fight's pretty good, too. Well, I love just the whole, like, the whole feeling in the last part where, like, Apocalypse, the planet, is, like, coming. Well, and, dude, like, well, dude, not only that, but, like, something we didn't mention was, like, the fact that, like, they were literally going to put gold kryptonite on Clark so that he would lose his powers for good. Yeah, that was which eventually he used apparently in the CW verse because that's why he doesn't have powers anymore. And then, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like that was just the feeling of dread of like the red skies yeah. and like you see like the like planet coming. And I love the scene of um, Clark talking with Martha in the loft. Yeah, and Jonathan's there too. Yeah, like, it's kind of like then Clark leaves and you see the two parents in the loft and like like looking up at the sky. Yeah, oh, so good. <laughs> Need a sun. <laughs> it's so good, man. Um, yeah, like a lot of that episode is just really, the really half is amazing. Yeah, and I love the everything. With, the scene with Clark and Lex in the in the burned out Luther mansion. Well, before even get there, like Lionel. Yeah, um, Lex was able tests. to replicate all his memories or something, and then but he was he was like between all of his clones, he was able to make a perfect replica. Yeah, and he's like, so we're gonna we're we all he needs is a heart. And I'm gonna cut Dude. your heart out. And yeah. Lionel's got like a bushy ass beard, <laughs> and he's like, he doesn't have a he makes a deal anymore. with Darkseid, doesn't he? Yeah, he's working with Darkseid to like bring Lex yeah. back, and like it was so good. And then, um, yeah, uh, Tess breaks free and shoots Lionel. Yeah. <laughs> and then Lionel's like, you know, all I care about is bringing my son back. So Darkseid's like, okay, and he rips out Lionel's heart. <laughs> Possesses his body, revives Lex, and then, like, Michael Rosenbaum's back. Yeah. And then, like, uh, yeah, the scene between him and Clark and the burned-out mansion was amazing. Um, but I loved that scene. I would have taken it! would have relished it, embraced it. Yeah. Um, but that scene, to me, showed that Lex knowing Superman's secret could have worked in this universe. Yeah. Like, I don't think Lex would have, like you know, revealed it to the world or anything. Right. I think Lex would have liked to be the one to know that, like the only one to know that. Yeah. And then, and then it's, we'll get to it, but the way they, I was so happy with everything with Lex, and then he kills Tess, which I always expected. Yeah. I thought if that, that was Lex gonna be my ever question. came back, he was going to kill Tess. Yeah. That was my question. That was going to be one of my questions to you, but you just answered it. If Tess should have lived or died. I there- like that she died. Yeah. What I didn't like was stupid neurotoxin, <laughs> like fucking memory wiping, adamantium bullet bullshit. <laughs> like she's like, oh, and he's like, what? And she's like, oh, all your memories are going to be wiped out. He's like, what? <laughs> and then it flashes like all of Smallville and then he loses his memory. I'm like, 
The only thing I like about that scene is that it's, the first thing he sees is Superman. Yeah. Like, he walks up to the you window. Know what else is great, you know what else is great about that scene? What? When he looks out the window and they do the zoom out, Luther Corp becomes Lex Corp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of great moments in this finale. I like what the how they handled Chloe and all of her resolutions. Yeah. I do think that Granny Goodness, Desaad, and Godfrey all went out very easily. <laughs> Oliver's like, hey, dead. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, Clark's, you know, seeing him in the fortress, like you said, taking the suit when he flies up out of the fortress. Dun, you, don't, dun, dun. you don't get a close look at him. Like it's definitely a CGI suit. Yeah. Um, but like, I like the moment where like Lois is on Air Force One and like she's against the window and it's going down. And then all of a sudden you just see Clark like fly up to the window and put his hands against the window. Yeah. And like, then he lifts the like plane smiling and she, at each other. Yeah, and it's so good. And then he's like floating away. And you see like kind of Superman silhouette with like apocalypse behind him. I'm like, yeah. this is epic. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, whatever happened to that guy just running through a cornfield? Like, I know, this, right? Um, but yeah, it was cool. Like, I thought overall, like, would I have loved to have seen a, like Tom Welling walking around in the Superman suit? Yes. Yeah. But I'm okay that we didn't get that. Yeah. Because to me, it's not really about like, him walking around in the Superman suit. No. It's, it's about the journey to get to, to Superman. get there. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I think this thing, I think seeing him in the suit would have hindered the very, very end of the episode. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. The, the, I think the, I think the iconic shirt rip is enough. That last five minutes is amazing. It brings it all home. It's amazing. It's one of the dun, best. Dun, 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 dun. The, the John Williams music. When I remember when I first heard the little hints of it, I'm like, <gasps> and then like Jimmy Olsen comes back. I'm like, Jimmy! And that's like, oh, <laughs> you do your brother proud. I'm like, oh yeah. It's not Jimmy. It's, what is Jimmy? No, I, I also, but it's not my Jimmy. It's not Henry. <laughs> I also, not Henry James. Too, I also love too how like Chloe and Oliver like have a kid and like Chloe's like reading that to that kid like the comic and it's like that's the day the boy became superman and then she closes the comic and you see it's a smallville comic yeah, okay i have questions <laughs> <laughs> does the whole world know or does chloe did she self-publish a smallville comic <laughs> of her of clark's life just to have like because like that like there's images of clark standing by the bridge and stuff and yeah the just, cover like, is him standing by the bridge yeah i'm like okay so like the whole world? I don't, I don't I'm not going to read too much. At, I kind of look at it the same way as how they did the X-Men comics and Logan. Sure. But that was very specific. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, dude, I, I do. I kind of want to spin off with their little kid, though, because when he goes to bed, he looks at that bow and arrow, and I'm like, he's going to be a green arrow. Yeah, probably. I we don't should, remember. Maybe in season 11 he became green arrow. <laughs> in the comic book form right uh, yeah <laughs> the, the, last, is... the last few minutes just like great, great caesar's ghost yeah, like you're just giving me more and more super weird things i love and yeah. you see like lex as the president which is what the show always hinted would eventually happen yeah. um i do wish there'd been like a classic kind of superman lex scene where clark is floating outside of lex's office window mm -hmm. and it's just like fuck you <laughs> You know, like, but I do love their last lines to each other where Clark's like, I'm sorry I couldn't save you, Lex. And yeah. then leaves. Like, I love that. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. Because it's like, somebody save! <laughs> yeah, and dude, like, just the subtle hints of, like, the Superman theme throughout that scene. Yeah. So <laughs> good. And then, like, and then like it's getting there, and then, like, all of a sudden it's like, somebody call Perry White! There's a bomb! <laughs> 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 like, like, Somebody tell Perry White, just came in over the wire. There's a bomb in an elevator uptown. Just tell the minister, I may be a few minutes late.
so good. And when he busts out on the roof, da 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 I remember just screaming. I'm like, it's everything I wanted. Like, I always wanted the show to end that way. Dude, like, I can't picture a more perfect ending, honestly. Oh, that was so good. Tearing up just thinking, like, I know, and he's running towards the camera. Are you crying? A little bit. And he's running towards the camera, rips off the glasses, rips over the shirt, and it zooms in. And yeah. then the credits are like the Richard Donner credits. Yeah. Where they're like flying into the screen. It's amazing, dude. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, bring <laughs> on season 11. <laughs> which they did in comic yes. form. Yeah, which is whatever. Like, they just, and they essentially threw in every single, like, Batman is suddenly in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't count. I think, I think Lana comes back and she's like a superhero. The only thing I like that I remember reading was... Lex would still didn't know who he was, which was stupid. But he'd like have hallucinations of Tess. Oh, that's like, cool. Like talking to him. Um, here's what I here's what I propose: the CW erases the Crisis on Infinite Earths Smallville scene. Oh, yes, please, thank you. Yeah, uh, there's no yeah. way Clark would give up being. Well, dude, superhero. like, dude, that's and, some like, bullshit. dude, and like, I'm I, like, I rewatched that scene today, and I was thinking about it. I was like, how would Smallville's version of Lois? be okay with that because like she was it. yeah because like she was the one pushing him all season to like fulfill his destiny and i'm like i don't think i don't think this version of lois would be okay with him giving up his powers hell no no way yeah yeah that was bullshit yeah i know so here's what i propose make that non-canon because that doesn't exist to me bring like bring welling back bring if rosenbaum wants to come back have him wear a bald cap. Bring Erica Durant back. Like, make them, like, the three main, like, principal cast members. And just do, like, a one-off, like, six or ten episodes season 11. I mean, yeah. Especially now, like, just watching, like, Superman and Lois, like, scenes. Yeah. The amount you can do now, just in, like, ten years difference. Yeah. Like, on TV, you can make really big action scenes now. Exactly, yeah. Like I would have loved if Smallville had had that budget back then or that capability. I know. So many scenes could have been so much more epic, even. But that's part of its charm. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially in the early seasons. Yeah. Final season, I thought, like, ended it so well. I was so satisfied at the end. Yeah. I mean, that was growing up with Smallville, man. <laughs> that <laughs> summer 2011... Texas. Yeah, like, that and Harry Potter ending. I'm like, oh my dude, god, I'm, heartbreaking. I'm an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, dude, it felt like you just like got like abandoned by your family. Yeah, it was like, oh, they're off to be doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But yeah, what an ending. I know. Uh, like like we said, season ten is probably not the best season, but I think it's. It's very satisfactory, and that's all I could have asked for. So tell me, Alex, was Clark man or Superman? Both. Whoa, profound. Yeah. <laughs> I think he became. I think he became a man like the moment he realized that he could have like two separate lives, like oh, marrying Lois and fulfilling his destiny. But like when he's when he actually fulfills his destiny, he's Superman. Mm -hmm. That's very that's wise. how I look at it. Very wise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I miss this show. I miss it. It's crazy it's been as long as it has. I know. Like, Ten what? years it's been off the air. Season, season 10 was 10 years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> that's nuts. It's sad, man. That's why That's why I'm like, dude, in, the, in an age where everything is getting either rebooted or revived, that's why I'm saying just, like, don't do a full 20-episode season, like, I'll be fine if you do like only six episodes. Like, mm -hmm. just yeah, do it. Just as a fun little thing. That'd be I cool. know, like, I know, like Rosenbaum and Welling have like said that they would do mm -hmm. it if it's in animated form. Well, then do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just yeah. give us something. Yeah. But that is our review of season ten and partially the season eleven comics and <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths and how much it sucks. <laughs> Not canon to us. Um, Pat, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at this Pat Guy. I'm also on the Cinemania World podcast. Uh, I also have a podcast with Alex about Star Wars called Jabba's Palace. And I also have a podcast with Alex about movies in general and different franchises. Untitled movie podcast. Uh, hopefully it has a title. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you can find me at my official website, alexmaddenmovies.mystrikingly.com. All my social media links will be there. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex. That's Pat. I'm happy he joined me on this. Well, he was on nine seasons, so he joined me on a nine-season ride to get to this point. What um, a journey. I know. And pretty soon, um, being released soon, we'll be doing a huge retrospective where there's probably just going to be no structure. We're probably just going to banter about the show. I'll just uh, talk about Lionel Luther for four hours. That's cool with <laughs> it'll, me. It'll definitely be as long as we want it to be, you know, so... Um, Wouldn't want to miss how it all turns out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll be releasing that very soon. We'll be filming that very soon. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. We'll Always see- hold on to Smallville. <laughs> it, yes, please, definitely. Um, we'll see. Somebody the- save me. Come on. Okay. Hell yeah! It's still the best theme song. Let in me <laughs>